Okay, so now that we've established what a hormone is, my next question is about balancing hormones, which is I know your passion and what you work with. Um, it's funny that we're having this conversation because as of lately, I've become obsessed. It's just my personal philosophy or theory I've been adapting lately. I've been noticing personally that it seems to be that balance is kind of the secret ingredient to almost anything beautiful. Like, um, okay, just earth, like just the nature of the fact that earth exists. It's because it's a balance of different circumstances that allow earth to exist. And I'm finding this, um, like universal law of balance existing in almost everything that's like created and beautiful. And it, it really ties in with what you're saying about hormonal balance and how the body can be different based on your hormonal balance. So my question for you is, what are some signs that your homo- hormones may be out of balance? Like what could oh, be Oh, love the question. Yeah, yeah, love the question. Before I answer the question, I love that you said that because it, the balance is, is major key. I mean, you have that balance in your life. So something I love to teach because I don't want to I don't want to teach people a diet. I want to teach them how to have balance. So in the beginning, I, I put people through a, a sugar detox and teaching them about food. But the idea here is to not have you on an extreme diet. And it's to have balance. It's to have have control. So I couldn't agree more. And symptoms of really hormonal imbalance, especially for my women. Men, I'll talk about men a little bit just because I know there's there's guys listening to this. Um, a, a low testosterone is like it's just like a, like an epidemic right now. There's so many men in their late twenties and especially in their thirties. I'm, I'm sure forties, but really noticing in their thirties that their testosterone is really low. Uh, and that could definitely be from, it's probably most dominantly from just all the chemicals that are in our foods and our beverages and our plastics. There's a lot of xenoestrogens and chemicals that are mocking estrogens. So it's really affecting men's testosterone. Um, so something to look out for is just fatigue, um, hard time losing body fat, uh, kind of noticing that they're having a hard time weight training. The easiest way to obviously boost testosterone is to lift weights for men and women. Uh, I'm a huge advocate of, of making sure that people are um, li- like weight training, but they'll notice really excessive fatigue, hard time losing weight for men, um, which should be an alarming thing because men typically have it easier than women, right? They're 10% hormonally made. We're 50% hormonally made. You cannot compare us. Um, um, kind of fat tissue around their chest area is another, another obvious sign, uh, kind of that got high. If you put a, um, like a float around their belly, right. If you put one of those, I don't know, donut floats, if they're gaining weight in that area, that could be a sign. Um, but for women really PMS, we have been inherently told that PMS is normal. It is not normal. (laughs) <laughs> so PMS is not normal. Uh, we've been told that that's just a part of our cycle. It's just something that we're going to experience. But I like to compare PMS really similar to if you have a fever. If you have a fever, your body is telling you, hey, you're sick. <laughs> you probably shouldn't go to work today because you're sick. You're actively sick. PMS is a sign that your hormones are sick. So if you're having breast tenderness, if you're having mood swings, especially in your luteal phase, which is like really the, the, the nine-ish days leading up to your period, um, if you're having oh, so many different things, migraines, acne around your jaw, chest or back acne, uh, like I said, irritability, insomnia, bloating, I get really back- emotional, like, sorry to mm. interrupt you, but just you're to good. like put input on what happens to me. I get PMS hard. Um, I get, I do get my breasts get tender. Um, I get really irritable, like, and sad. Mm. And like, I ruminate on past things when I'm having PMS and I get Mm. wildly hungry. I don't know if that part of it is normal. If that's like a hormonal issue as well, I get very Uh, hungry. It is a hormone. Yeah. Because usually the the week leading up to our cycle, we get really hungry. But the biggest reason why so many women are like, Dr. Steph, I feel like I can eat everything the week before. Well, that's actually normal because your metabolism speeds up during that time. It wants more energy. It wants more calories. But unfortunately, we are all plagued with this go, go, go. Majority of us are under eating and we're not eating enough. So then all of a sudden this week before your period comes and you're like, well, why am I ravenous? Well, you probably don't eat enough regardless. We're so busy. We're, we're, you know, running here. We're running there. We're, we're skipping lunches. Um, even people, I love to fast. I'm a fasting doctor. Oh, intermittent fasting or fasting for women doesn't work. That's a lie. <laughs> That's a lie. I've helped many women learn how to fast and extended fast. I've been doing it for many years, but if you do it improperly and you're skipping meals during your eating window, yeah, of course you're going to have cravings and you're going to have food triggers and you're going to have, um, cravings for sweets. So that like leading up to your period, if you're feeling really hungry, 
listen to your body and, and feed it obviously good good nutritious foods you know that 80 to 90 percent of your week but that's why it is a normal thing but when it's ravenous and then we're skipping meals and then we're binging or we're eating stuff that's bad that's when it becomes a problem that's when it's going to affect your hormones actually it's going to make it worse and then you'll gain weight from it yeah no that makes a lot of sense actually okay my next question for you 